Greetings sailors and welcome back to a bit more live recorded stuff and with the news we've had this week uh, well <laughs> one of the bits of news we've had this week aside from the more dramatic stuff is that we're going to get a complete line of British battle cruisers and it's given me the thought that I haven't really touched a HUD in a while which is well arguably the only proper British battle cruiser we have in game but we also have things like Congo and the um, oh god what's the tier 4 I almost said Ishizushi there which is tier 4 well that's not the right one the tier 4 that comes before Congo that one which is kind of a preliminary design that's basically a British battle cruiser design as well and uh, well of course we also have repulse now also but uh, yeah hood I just haven't touched in quite a long while so let's give it a go and see how I do now I used to be really down on hood because it was survivable but the gun performance was frankly uh, lackluster it's probably the kindest way of putting it um, often quite frustrating but it has been improved a bit since those days. I think they did some things with the, the AP shells in terms of the uh, the, the fusing f threshold. And I can't even remember if it's gotten like better dispersion or something since then. But um, yeah, I could never do very well with it in terms of actually getting um, any kind of amount of decent damage. It was survivable. But what was it? It was like 70 to 80k damage. I would always hit around that mark and find it incredibly hard to do any better. But uh, I don't know if that will still hold true. Now we've got top tier, which is great, but we have a standard game and there's two submarines per side, which is less great. So. That's not so good. And yes, I have, <laughs> I have the anime hood captain. I think this is, um, was this a no, not ARP. This was um, the Azur Lane captain. I think it's like the only Azur Lane captain I have. Or maybe I have other Azur Lane captains, and they're just languishing in the uh, in the port. It's the only Azur Lane captain that I know for sure is on a ship. Anyway. So we've got plenty of speed to work with, which will be useful if I need to relocate. 33 and some knots. I can't remember where I see that now. Uh, is it H? Can you see a top speed in H? Yeah, there we go. 33.6. So I can be reasonably confident about going on this flank in that I can then make a getaway if I need to, because the concealment well it ain't fantastic but 14 kilometers is um, you know there are worse ones around there absolutely are so what have we got Cachalo the Torigo is here starting to see more of those around as people have got the tokens I've almost got enough tokens for the tier 8 now actually so you might see a tier 8 video sometime in the 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 uh, the coming week as well. What is it? The Is it the Cuniberti that's the tier 8? I can't remember offhand now. But yeah, that, that one is uh, over the hump as it were in terms of the transition from torpedoes to, to guns. So we'll see how I fare with that because as you probably have seen or possibly have seen, I found the Torigo a little awkward because there were a lot of parts of it that just weren't really upgrades over the the tier 6 which was very good for its tier maybe even a little too good for its tier I don't know right what are you doing Atlanta at the moment you're just kind of chilling you know, forwards or backwards well that's not why did I that's not an Atlanta that's definitely not an Atlanta why did I think Atlanta Saharu Konigsberg we've got Julia Cesare, we've got uh, Nagato. Okay, Head Sahara is probably the biggest immediate possible threat, but there could also be, of course, any uh, either of that pair of uh, Cachalots here as well. 
presume it's pronounced Cachalot rather than catch a lot. <laughs> Which uh, I'm guessing is a fish. They did name a lot of their subs after fish. The Americans. During that, that era anyway, obviously uh, these days they've gone more to the uh, the capital ship naming convention. Things being named after states. Alright, that is probably Dutch Cruiser HE. Did not see where I've landed with those AP shells, so. Too much lead, not love, no lead, not sure. It's tempting to go for that guy, but this guy has got by far the more dangerous guns, the Heinrich. Oh, yeah, there's a Heinrich there as well. I guess I was more back there. Oh, hello, Cashelo. Right, there's an awkward amount of scrolling involved with. Uh, don't have the rage. To turn back around. I might eat some tops. I only have four heals, so I do have to be a little careful. See how these do. Oof, okay. Well, he was turning away a bit. Still got one pen, I suppose. So those are, I guess, unguided torps sent my way. What is my drop range? Eight kilometers. Right, let's use one of those heels. Just clip to the edge of that Hatsuharu. Is you is that really no, oh, that was a very close Oh never mind, he's down. And so he got his fuel smoking, so I don't have any vision just now. Don't, don't die. It's not allowed. I think he might take one of those, and if he does, he's probably gonna. Oh no, just, just whiffed it. Okay. Tuki York. Yeah, let's start heading downwards again. She, of course, meant for the uh, destroyer. This thing does not get the high pen HE. Which mostly, uh, I don't think any of the. I don't know, it's not really mostly. I don't think any of the 15-inch British battleships have any extra kick in the high explosive. 13 and a half, 14, and 16-inch. Yes. And 18 inch. But not 15 inch. I think this is all of their battleships. No, they've got a Britannia somewhere. That I don't think is even spotted yet. I guess our Cachalo. Would be nice to have some vision right now. How are you doing, Gnizen here? Let's see if we get some fire from the north. Are you like reversing? No. I was just being a bit impatient, apparently. All right, full HE! Duke of York, I was saying about 14 inch guns. It's not quite as annoying as the KGV just because it fires a bit slower. Uh, 
was not bad. Don't really want to get an, into an extended firefight, pun intended. The Duke of York. Let me just squeeze those shots in there. Yes, yeah, just over the limb of that island. Right, I don't really know if I can say how this is going so far. I mean, the, the battleships are pretty much all up north. I'm wondering, to be honest, if... Oh no, Britannia actually sank. Where was he? No idea. But yeah, we're kind of being herded into our camp. Although south it's just the Torrigo. The Hatsu go down? Yes, Hatsu is down. Actually, from him alone, that's not really that big of a surprise. It's not a high caliber ship, especially. Oh, can I hit that? I could if I could. Could do with the kill. No. He got himself closer to the island. Chucky York's just heading out of range. Then goes the other allied sub. I really don't want to turn around right now. Yeah, I'll just go face first into all of these enemy ships. That seems like a totally good idea. Heal. Yeah. This might actually be one of those games where I'm stuck with that uh, 70k. Really? Okay, well, two pens for 3,000, I think. I think one of those wasn't actually a, a pen then. Because uh, <clears throat> that ain't two full pens with 15 inch AP. Not by, uh, not by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, these guns really uh, do still feel like they do chip damage. <laughs> you have to have any particularly uh, strong hits against anybody except that cruiser at the beginning, and that was purely because I got a citadel. No idea where the enemy Tarigo is. They haven't been spotted for a while. Any other pens? Oh, well, just as I say that, he's in the cap. Okay, that's got to be... Heinrich. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this one, <laughs> somehow. But this is one of my least favourite maps to play standard on. And we're kind of seeing the reason here. Right, in theory I can just punch through your bow. 
Nice, 15k. That was that was a good smack. Fortunately, I'm going to be broadside to him. That wasn't too bad. Alright, it's going to turn faster than my turrets though. By a fair margin. I'm actually, I think I might just try and ram the Nagato. Like, what else am I going to do here? If I could kill the Cesare, it would be nice, but my turrets would actually have to. Come on. There we go. Probably got about to be smacked by the Heinrich. I've actually beaten my average, 86k. Almost certainly will die if the Nagato gets to... Uh... Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, that's just... It's like if I could... If I could have a ban list of you know maps and modes, I would I would absolutely stick this Two Brothers standards uh, standard mode on uh, on that ban list. It's just not fun for me at all. Well, there we are, 86k. So I'm actually a little over my average. Second place on the team. Uh, yeah, submarines were all more or less. Thoroughly waste of time. <laughs> Don't know what to say there. We had almost all of their battleships up north, but our ships down south got fairly well owned by, I guess, the Shumfon, their Torigo, and whatever else was there. So, no idea. Let's give that another go. Probably won't get as good matchmaking this time around, but one never knows. So, yeah. <laughs> Straight to tier 9. Oh well. No dis... Um, I said no destroys there. No. There are destroys. No submarines. That's what I was trying to say. In fact, we have a completely even spread. Four battleships, four cruisers, four destroyers. So, we'll see how we do. In theory, I should have a better time against the cruisers than most of their battleships. And if I can get a broadside on most of those things, you know, you hit Musashi in the right place, pow pow pow, the guns will still be good enough. I think the only one of their cruisers I might struggle with angled is the Azuma. I guess we'll see. I think we'll angle a bit south to begin with. There's always the possibility one of their destroyers might try and sneak round the south. But uh, I guess we'll see. I think one of the possibilities for the British battle cruisers was that they'll all get defensive AA, but it better be more useful than it is on this, because for those who are somehow unaware, uh, it's only the... where are they? Oh yes, yeah, there we go, you can see one of the launchers on top of the turret there, the unrotated projectile launchers, those big boxy things. Uh, they basically launch little parachute rocket things. <laughs> Which were completely useless in real life. And I think uh, didn't actually last very long in terms of um, actually being fitted to ships. But yeah. And this, they, they are your super short range DPS. And that's what the defensive AA uh, is um, uh, working on, essentially. So if somebody fly, flies right overhead and you get a chance to fire those off and they haven't been wrecked up, uh, you know, completely um, like smashed by HE then yeah, they can do something, but uh, otherwise 
It's it's uh, kind of a useless consumable on. Uh, <laughs> well, extra useless if if the uh, the the part of your AA that it's targeting doesn't even like exist anymore. Right, who are you looking at, Misashi? Turn your guns towards me, maybe? You are awfully broadside there. I mean, if I could uh, be so lucky as to uh, get that cheek armor of yours, that would be lovely. There he is. This might hurt in return, of course. Okay, that wasn't too bad. He's angling a bit now, though. Ugh, no! No, not even close. Those shells were barely in the same neighbourhood. I think I may just try and disengage a little. I don't want to be... trying to go... Oh, well, never mind. No, I'm not going to be able to disengage when there's a Fletcher there. Spotted me. Just killed the Minsk. Yes, okay, never mind, this cap is, uh, not a safe place to remain. Absolutely not a safe place to remain. I'll see who that Fletcher decides to get for. Uh, what have we got? Uh, we also lost our Asashio already, so we're left with the Valkyrie and uh, Udaloi. Neither of which are super stealthy, that's going to be a problem for camping. As far as rough matchmaking for a hood goes, this is... This is pretty rough. And our team is getting pretty badly spanked already, for goodness sake. Barely had a chance to do anything. And we're already down to only 100 points. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That does not bode well. I don't know if we're going to come back from being this badly spanked this early. Like, it's going to take some kind of miracle to come back from, from being this far down this early. Four to zero with uh, with two caps under their control, and we're only just getting one now. Right, I bet that's the Fletcher targeting me. No, it's not. It was an Asashi. Hello, there you are, Fletcher. I might actually have to load up some high explosive for that Musashi. Because I don't think my AP is going to do much when they're angled. Uh, 80 points! <laughs> Oh, this was, uh, this was not a good thing to be bottom tier on, apparently. This was definitely not a good tier to be bottom tier on. Well, I don't know what I was setting out to prove by taking the hood, just to see whether it was, uh, as whatever to play, you know, as, as lacklustre to, to play as it felt back in the day. And I don't know if I've really disproved that with only two matches. I'm gonna have to play some more, maybe. Right, we're running out of map here. Right, we've got a cyclone going on. Well, that doesn't really help us, I don't think. Another fire. 
extinguish that. We don't actually have two kills now, but uh, be the sole focus of a Musashi when you're in a tier 7 battleship. That's never a fun time. That's never a fun time at all. Why is this Seattle doing? <laughs> Literally trying to escape to the next match. Uh, you know, the next map even. Okay, they've just given up. That's worthy of a report. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't normally be in this. Uh, want to be in this position of having to spam H E in a hood, but like, what what choice do I have right now? We're gonna have to go for some kind of truly heroic ah, turn around to. Uh, to change this. I mean, you know, if the Seattle was actually playing, we might be able to have some counter against the Fletcher that's probably... Yeah, there he is, shadowing my position, but... Uh, yeah, no, not so much. We're effectively an extra player down. Eee, this might hurt. Okay, yes it did, down to my last heal as well. I don't... I don't know, Seattle. Gee! You know, radar would sure be useful right now. In a cyclone. Yeah. I think this one was a bit hopeless, to be honest. I, I, I do. I, 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 I mean, I still... I still absolutely... You know, feels worthwhile reporting that Seattle has just stopped playing. That absolutely has exacerbated things, but uh, yeah, this one is feeling like it was kind of unwinnable from the start. So we can get close enough to spot that Fletcher firing from smoke. I know he's. His uh, torps are cycling, but... Oh, well, never mind. Oof, that was rough. That was very rough. That was definitely a below average damage game. And, well, Seattle did so little. You gave up super early and just sailed to the corner and did nothing. Like, that York, I think, was one of the first to get blapped. And if you're only just above the York, then... Yeah, you absolutely did nothing. Anyway, I might actually go for a third game. Don't usually do this when I'm doing these live recordings, but man, that one was just so lackluster. Back to top tier, no subs again, and this time it kind of sucks for our tier 5s. <laughs> There's only, what, three tier 5s per team? Yeah, although I think Partly the reason so many have been sucked in is we have a failed div of two tier fives and a tier six, which is matched up against a tier seven division. So, yeah, they kind of brought it on themselves. Not so much that T twenty two. Although to be honest, I wouldn't mind being a T twenty two in this matchup. I like the T twenty two. Nice and nice going that way. I guess we'll swing to the west. Our lower tier battleships. Looks like the Gunnison now is going. Uh, swing to the east, rather. Gunnison now is going west. Uh, <laughs> we're going west straight into that island if it doesn't straighten out a little. Also, possibly would be useful if I went back to AP. So, of the enemies, um, hmm, Colorado's guns are nasty, Gunnison and Cracciolo obviously can overmatch, 
unfortunately also has SAP to work with. Um, don't know if I'm particularly worried about any of their destroyers. Yudachi does have long range torpedoes, but they're also quite slow. And they have a fairly long reload. So I don't think there's any enemy ships that I want to be super worried about. Pod voice ski. You're not diffed with anyone, are you? No. No, the failed div was on our side, of course. Colorado! You are on this flank, okay. That's definitely going to be... Uh, something we have to play somewhat cautiously around. I mean, Colorado in this matchmaking, the, the only real downside it has is its low speed. Although I am still slightly salty that they uh, took away its improved energy retention. Oh, hello. That's got to be a destroyer in the middle, surely. Maybe someone down there. Could have been, no, well, could have been the Normandy. No. That is a very broadside Normandy. Are you going for the middle? That's, that's a bold move in a Normandy. A very, very bold move. Okay, there is a destroyer there, so that's what spotted me. Let's have a quarter forwards rather than... Uh, Right, I know we have a whole bunch of ships here, but I kind of feel like being top tier. I want to pull my weight against the Colorado. I don't want to just leave the... Uh, oh dear, T-22's down. Oh well. I'm guessing they got hydroed, or are they just outspotted? But yeah, we need things to move on this flank, and the, the Colorado is definitely the biggest obstacle right now. They are basically facing every Colorado player's worst nightmare, though. Or the Kansas, or any of the other slow ones. In that they've picked the wrong flank! And now they are absolutely stuffed. Because there is basically no getting out of this alive for them. Oof. <laughs> I mean, I know battleship dispersion, but oof. <laughs> right. Had much better hits on the Normandy, and that was far further away. Hooray for randomness! We want now, nah, let's just stick with AP. Alright, uh, I think keep going south. Uh, that's probably the Z31 in the middle. But Voisky has very close range torps, if I remember correctly. They're what, four kilometres? As long as I don't blunder into extreme close range. Not sure why our mass is at the back though. What are you thinking you might accomplish from back there? Put 
We're expecting to receive some Iron Duke. Uh, oh! I was going to say HE, but no, he's using his AP shells. What? Is that allowed? There we go, that's more like it. That's the kind of accuracy I would prefer to see at these ranges. But Perth is still there. I'll let somebody else handle the pod voice ski. Map control's not looking so hot right now. And uh, that is a big blob of ships. Did we lose the Yeah oh dear no. Okay, yes, we lost both of those. I want to be slightly careful of, of uh, said 31 torps. I suppose the Podvoisky is still alive. Helena. I think my rear turrets are on, I might even get a shot. It's not like he's trying to stay hidden. Oh no! <laughs> Whatever will I do against those depth charges? He's down. Paths to the south, I'm not too worried about that. Here. So that's not such a big concern. But yeah, I don't want to go through that gap just yet. So you'll have to forgive me, Andrea Doria. Right, there's the Z31. Okay, we know where he is. Hello, Helena. Perth is way, way out of it. It's a pity neither of them even managed a kill in the T22, and that was just kind of a waste. T22 can be a very strong ship if played right. Ooh, seven people focusing me. Happy fun joy. Oh, I'll take out the Z31, that's by far my biggest concern right now. Still got the Yudachi left. The Yudachi tops could hurt, so we don't want to get hit by those. I'm happy to take the attention for a bit. Helena should go down. Be nice to. Uh, you're going to give me some broadside. I guess I'll take that. Be nice to. Oh, hello, Yadachi. To kill that normally, right? I'm not going to get my rear turrets around for that guy. Try and make use of the island. Nice! Right, there's the torpedoes. Oh, I like taking Let's try and make it only one, though. That's fine. And put down that Caracciolo, there we go. 
gun wise that's a big threat out the way. Still have a good now. On the York. This is feeling like a much more fun match, I gotta say. Right, Piotr Viliki, let's not underestimate that at close range. We absolutely do not want to give that guy a broadside to work with. Yeah, that's not really a good angle. I also don't want to be broadside to those ships up there. I'm trying to get my. Uh, and go around a bit better around. Definitely cognizant of the fact that. Oh no, please don't ram! No, he's gonna go for the ram. I can't do much about that. Oh well. How do I avoid this? Whoa! Oh no, 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 I absolutely could not. Oh well, I tried. 155k, but I would not have willingly made that trade. How's everyone else doing? Oh, not that well. Not sure whether Britannia's still down out here. Got distracted by the Perth, I guess. Oh well, I got to do way more in this one though. I mean, being top tier helped, and yeah, a bunch of that was ramming damage, but that's still, what, 120k? Definitely above my uh, damage average. It's a pity it's going to be another loss, but at least this was a far more closely contested game. Well, with hindsight, if I had gone towards the A cap where the Gnais now and the Duke of York were, that probably would have ended up being a better position. But of course, I had no way of knowing at the very start of the match that that would have been the better thing to have done, because both of them got pretty thoroughly manhandled. The Gnais now managed halfway up the team list, but the Duke of York, yeah, and the Britannia really just didn't do much at all. Or the Nuremberg, which was alive right until the end, almost. So, yeah, that was a bit disappointing, but overall a much better game. I, I, I kind of feel like our top, other top-tier battleships were just not quite as, as good as theirs. Like, the, the Colorado got taken out early, and the Caracciolo wasn't that much of a threat, but the Gneis now, especially the Udachi and the Perth, managed to quite successfully just like the Britannia got utterly distracted and ignored what was important and just kept chasing after the Perth which he was never going to catch and uh, that York actually almost um, they, they did very well as well as the Piotr Veliki they got four kills they almost had a crack and so yeah yeah we could have done with slightly better battleship players other than me on our team because as it was in the top half it was me and the Julio Cesare <laughs> So, uh, oh well, but that was a far better damage result, and um, this has to be one of the very few times I've managed over 100k in uh, a hood, even if 30 odd k of that was from that rather unwanted ram, which uh, definitely benefited their team more than it benefited our team, even if it was one of their better players. Anyway... I think that is it for the hood, which is, um, I don't know, I guess a bit better than it was. Disregarding the fact that it's been three losses in a row, but yeah, sometimes you just can't control these things. You got to see yourself exactly how those three games went down. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what form the battle cruiser line itself takes because we don't even know what that is going to be like yet. Wargaming is testing out two different approaches. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.